Well, last Saturday in Cape Town, Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, delivered the 15th annual Nelson Mandela Lecture. And it was stirring and timely because it highlighted the ongoing discrimination against half of humanity, the female half, of course. The auditorium, of course, was liberally sprinkled with orange, that uh, bright and optimistic color that we're being told we should wear every 25th of the month to stress our ongoing uh, fight against such discrimination. Uh, last week, of course, I dealt with child discrimination and I felt rather chided that I had not brought in the aspect of gender discrimination. I plead guilty because let's face facts. Women are not just the bearers, they are overwhelmingly the rearers of children and they're also the major sufferers in that incredible race to the bottom that most workers have to engage in because of the nature of the system in which we live and work. Now, I will, however, also admit that I'm not overly moved by arguments about the dearth of female chief executive officers, CEOs in, in major corporations. To my mind, a boss is a boss. Um, they cannot help it. The point is the same pressures apply on every boss, whether they be male, female, whatever the ethnicity, the gender, whatever. They have to behave in a certain way. A good boss, the definition I should say of trade unions and workers, tends to be the sort of boss that goes bust. And to my mind, really, the, the best example that epitomizes the dangers and the exploitation of women is that awful tragedy of Rana Plaza in Bangladesh in April 2013. That is when an eight-story building, already declared unsafe, collapsed. It took three weeks to dig out the 1,134 bodies of those who died instantly. There were another 2,500 people who were severely injured, some of them. Some died later. The interesting factor is that 80% of the dead and the injured were women, young women, aged between 18 and 20, paid a mere pittance. There was a large outcry, of course, of this, and then we had the classic example of hypocrisy by the big corporations, who promptly said they had absolutely nothing whatever to do with this. They, they weren't responsible. So we have to ask a question. An unsafe building, why were workers ordered into it? Very simply, they were ordered in by the factory owners, by the bosses, for the simple reason that they were under pressure from those very same global corporations to meet deadlines. And they couldn't afford, because they'd had to quote such low prices for the product, they could not afford any delays. So despite the fact that it was incredibly dangerous, in they went, and so they died. Now the global bans denied it, they carried on, they finally signed, some of them, uh, an agreement for better product, a better treatment of workers. But five years on, very little, if nothing, if anything, has actually changed. And I don't know, you know, if we every 25th of every month go around wearing orange, whether that will change anything at all. I don't think it will. It needs much more of that. Anyhow, that will be the focus of my Inside Labour column this week, which you can access on this platform, Fin24, and a version of which appears in the City Press business section on Sunday. Well, it's a patriarchal society. It's a society riddled by class and crisis. What do you think? Let's hear from you at editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.